for joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline. In the bleachers on Twitter, Stadium, Field of 12 Podcasts, always with a Houston Astros hat. It's Michael Felder. Felder, what's going on, man? Nothing, man. Listen, we're getting close to Christmas. I am hosting a gingerbread um, situation here. So, <laughs> what is? Excuse me, a gingerbread situation? Was yeah. this Jersey Shore? What are, what are we talking about here? <laughs> we got we got gingerbread houses going up, but they're all Jurassic World. So we're doing <laughs> Jurassic World gingerbread houses, and we're doing Ninja Bread, which are ninjas that the kids get to decorate. With the cream and the frosting and the whole deal. When can we come over? Whatever you want, man. Sounds like fun. Doors always open. I know, I know. You're back in Charlotte now. I'm gonna have to go pay you a visit. Uh, Speaking speaking of Charlotte, the Duke's Mayo Bowl is in Charlotte. Do you know who's do you know who's playing in these games at this point? State's going to be there with Maryland. We know the teams will be there, but this has to be really difficult for what you guys are trying to do and trying to get these matchups. I don't know who's available, who's transferred, who hasn't transferred, who's opting out, who's going pro. It's tough to keep up with these days. Yeah, it's a nightmare. It, it, it is. It's 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 really rough. But you know what? It's good for them. So I'm not going to sit here and complain. Yeah. It, it's it's really good for it's good for these guys to be able to move and be fluid. And I don't care if it's you know Jackson Smith and Jigba sitting out of the the actual playoff, or it's you know Devin Leary deciding to leave to go somewhere else and, and figure out what I thought he was going to go to the NFL, if we're being quite honest. So I, I think that these guys are doing what's best for them. And you know what? We, we, we got to deal with it. Michael Felder joining us here on the OG of the Heaster Automotive Group hotline. That's Joe Obvious. I'm Joe Giglio. We, we I, looking at Carolina, Michael, and their defense and the exodus there. Is that something in your opinion that could have been avoided or is this kind of, the price that Carolina's paying, in my opinion, for recruiting high-end players who didn't produce, and then you see other guys come in and say, hey, that's the reason you're not producing. You're in the wrong school. You're in the wrong scheme, if we want to specify uh, Tony Grimes in particular. I So here's, here's how I feel about it. I don't think they were coached up the way they should have been. I don't think that they were taught to do things the way they should have been. I think this would never happen if it was Butch Davis there, right? Okay. If Butch was there, he would let them know, hey, maybe you're not going to get on the field immediately, but you know what's going to happen? We're going to get you to where you need to be. And I think now what we're looking at is, and they thought that Gene Chizik was going to be an instant fix, but the reality of it is, is it's a gang of guys who came in with their own accolades who still needed a lot of development. And if you don't want to develop, if you don't want to do the work, then you're not going to, it's not going to happen for you. And if you can go somewhere else and either you get the development or you go somewhere else and they just let you do whatever you want to do freelance if you will and I think LSU has a very similar problem on defense where you got a lot of freelancers out there and you just let guys kind of cut them loose I I just I I don't know I'm I'm a firm believer from a defensive standpoint I'm a I come from a defensive background I'm a firm believer that defense has to be the most disciplined part of your football team and for UNC discipline was not on the table Michael Felder in the bleachers on Twitter, Stadium, and uh, Field of 12 podcast joining us here on the OG alongside Joe Giglio. I'm Joe Ovius, which I guess gets to some coordinator changes, right? Yeah. Um, I find it interesting that nobody seems happy. Nobody liked their OC when they left, and then they go and they replace the OC with somebody that they seem to like even less uh, in the grand scheme of things. Like, I liked Phil Longo at North Carolina. I thought, you know, given the circumstances, Tim Beck was kind of a, a, a conduit of what Dave Doran wants to do and how he wants to win football games. So, in some places, they'll just say, oh, what about, why this guy? Or what we see with Shane Beamer at South Carolina, where he went on t- a two-minute tirade, almost convincing himself that he made the right decision. What, what <laughs> is, this, is this just people being extremely online when they should log off? What am I missing here? Uh, one, I think everybody should log off. But two... Yeah. I am, I honestly, the, the biggest element of all this is what does Phil Longo look like at Wisconsin? Yeah. That is, to me, the biggest question that I have because I know who Tim Beck is. I watched him when he was at, what, Nebraska, Ohio State. I've watched, I've seen him. I know what he can do. But Longo at Wisconsin, 
That's a completely different animal and a completely different school. And I know, obviously, UNC, they got to get a new guy on board. You got to figure out what you're going to be. But I'm more interested in Longo at, at Wisconsin and, and, and working for Fickle because that is, it's a job that has very specific parameters. And how do we handle those very specific parameters? UNC's got a little more wiggle room than Wisconsin. But Wisconsin has a probably a higher ceiling mm-hmm. uh, year to year basis. So I want to see what he looks like there because also Braylon Addison, Braylon is is he's he's in the portal. What a seismic shift for Wisconsin football. We're going to see a, a seismic shift in college football when they expand to twelve teams. Mm-hmm. Bear with me though, here, Michael. Can, can we just fast forward to the championship between Michigan and Georgia, or <laughs> or, 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 or am I shortchanging TCU? T, I, I, I think you're shortchanging both of them, Ohio State and TCU. I would have loved to have seen a healthy Ohio State play in this game. I would have, but they're not. So I, sure. I just No Travion, no Jackson Smith and Jigba. I think that Ohio State still has the, the, the ponies to run. Okay. And that's the part that's going to be interesting. Listen, Joe, you talk all the time about talent, right? Yeah. If you're going to put rosters top to bottom, Ohio State is what? Oh, one through thirty, yeah, easy, right? They're good. They got good players. So I just, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. And this might go back to that idea we talked about with the transfer portal, where, oh, these guys aren't going to play. Guess what? I get to step up. We saw it happen with Marvin Harrison Jr. a year ago, where he was like, oh, I didn't get to play because those other guys were good, Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. And then all of a sudden, I go for 300 yards in, in, in the bowl game. So I think they've got an opportunity for guys that are waiting on the sidelines, and Mayan Williams is still going to play. And I, I know we won't see Travion Henderson, but I think they've got an opportunity. And we saw in the SEC championship game, we saw yeah, BK found some holes there. Yeah, they found space, and I don't. I, with the exception of Kelly Re- Keely Ringo, don't trust a single one of those Georgia defensive backs. Um, to flip it over to the to the other game. When you've got Quentin Johnson and Savion Williams, two guys that are six foot four, six foot five, you're gonna find space. And Max Duggan, I let me ask you, let me can I ask both of you guys this? I want both of you guys. I want Ovius and then you go, Julio. Okay. I want you guys both to respond to this. Did you see a performance this year that was better than Duggan in a loss, even that was better than Max Duggan in the in the Big Twelve Championship game? I mean, only one would be Hooker against Alabama. That was okay. the the Hooker performance was one that came to mind, and I, of course, my my attitude is also skewed sometimes too with some of the things that I've seen at Carolina, where they've you know Sam Howell has had incredible performances. Not Sam Howell with uh, I'm, go, I'm going back to last year because that's what I saw all the time. Right. Uh, but with Drake May, I saw some absolutely incredible performances when the rest of the team, I mean, was easily ready to lose a game. I know what you're saying though. And yeah. going into the and, and that's why I think the college football playoff expanding to twelve is not as this foregone conclusion that people make it want make it out to be because you're going to get performances like this if you see shocking situations in regular season finales or you see in championship games who's to say these things still won't happen in the early matchups in the college football playoff so let's let these things play out get back no, to I, get back to making some gingerbread I I dig it I just I think that I think in the twelve team playoff. Folks are going to be hyper focused and they're going to smash it. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Felder, we'll talk to you later, man. Appreciate it. All right. It's the OG. Peace.